Salutations, YouTube, and a very late Happy New Year from Speedy and all of us here at Terrier Productions. Today, to kick off the new year, we shall be doing a reboot review, and this time we shall be looking at the Transformers Reveal the Shield Deluxe Class Hot Rod. And in the words of MGO316, here we are, and there he is. And, first and foremost, as you probably remember from my original review of this guy, I said that this guy came in a three-pack, and, lo and behold, it did. So there's Hot Rod, and the other two figures he came with were re-releases of Universe Cyclonus and his Target Master Nightstick. Grow up. Also included in the set was an exclusive comic by my favourite US comic book publishers, IDW, and actually picks up from where Ultra Magnus got killed in the 2005 Transform... in the... Uh, no, sorry, not the 2005 Transformers film, the 1986 Transformers film. And the final accessory that came with the pack was this silver-plated... Whoops. Matrix of Leadership, as you can see. I'll just swing my desk lamp over so that you can get a better look at it. And uh, my camera won't focus. It's too focused on the background. Come on. Yeah, come on, focus. And stay still. Come on. Come on. Oh, screw you, camera. But, uh, but yeah, this Matrix was actually um, released with a re-release of the G1 Optimus Prime mold. The name of that re-release being the New Year Special Convoy, which was released in 2002. Or so the TF Wiki claims. Regardless, back now to the meat of the review, a.k.a. Hot Rod. And the first thing you will have probably noticed is, just like the original review of this guy, I still don't have the Fans Project TFX-04 Protector Armor. But, I am working on it. I have succeeded in finding it's going uh, at an ish price, shall we say, on eBay. Um, and I am planning on purchasing it in the, in the not-so-far future. In fact, if I'm doing my mathematics correctly, which a majority of the time I usually do, my purchase, my planned purchase for it is now 13 days from now, because at the time of recording, it is 10 past 7 on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013. So, yeah. For the majority of you who can't work that out, I am planning on purchasing it on Monday, February 4th, 2013. Which, as an also added side note, is, the, is going to be the first Monday of February. So, yeah. Nice little calendar trivia for you there. Regardless, I'm babbling on. So, let's get back to Hot Rod. Also, before we do, however, on a side note, I have succeeded in purchasing the TFX-05 Sidearm add-on kit. And Sidearm was basically, back in G1, he was, um, he was Hot Rod's Target Master Gun. Although, in the original cartoon, he was known as Firebolts. Fans Project had to rename him Sidearm for, well, copyright reasons. Regardless, now we can get onto the meat of the review. Huzzah! So, there is Hot Rod, and here he is, with the Transformers, Robots in Disguise, Voyager Class, Weaponizers, Optimus Prime. Or Powerizers Optimus, or whatever it was called, I can't remember. But yeah, as you can see, they're roughly the same length. Height-wise, however, I'm not so sure they scale up so well. All lengthwise flat mats. I, I'd imagine that against um, Hot Rod's vehicle mode, which I still have an inkling is a Lamborghini Countach, 
I still think that Optimus would be longer, especially in the trailer bed. But, uh, yeah. And now, here he is. With the Transformers Energon Treadbolt. Or, if you're familiar with calling the Unicron Trilogy series via their Japanese names, like I am now, Transformers Superlink Treadbolt. Who, as you can see, for the majority of you probably still own this figure, is a re-release slash repaint of Transformers Densetsu Micron uh, Scavenger. Just to let you all know, um, Densetsu Micron is the Japanese title for Transformers Armada. Which was, the third, which was the first third section of the Unicron Trilogy. But regardless, there they are in a side-by-side -side shot, and I will be honest, that's just thrown way out of proportion. True Treadbolt should be taller, but he shouldn't be longer. Oh well. You need to remember, Deluxe, Voyager. Deluxe, Voyager. So, yeah. So I will now... Oh wait, hang on. Before I do get those two transformed, there's just one more that I want to do, just so you can get an idea of how tall he is next to a Target Master and slash or Minicom. There he is with the Transformers Superlink repaint of Mirage. And if you owned that figure, you'll know that it came with two other Minicoms to form the Skyboom Shield. Which I will be reviewing soon. With any luck. But yeah. There they are, they're side by side. And I actually think that's scaled up pretty well. Truth be told. I actually think that that's scaled up pretty damn well. I don't know about you lot, but I think it's scaled up pretty damn well. So, yeah. So, I will now go and get those three transformed. And then we will go to Hot Rod's transformation. Okay, and now down to Hot Rod's transformation. So, let's get it underway, shall we? Hello, I am talking to you from behind a Lamborghini Countach ripoff. I'm totally kidding. Again, I still have no idea what Hot Rod's vehicle mode is supposed to be based off of. Apparently, though, his G1 vehicle mode was supposed to have been based off of some sort of Cybertronian sports car. So even Hasbro don't know what this dude is supposed to be based off of. No. Whatever. Anyway, to transform him, you want to take the missile, eject it from the gun. You want to rotate it around until that moulded in indent is facing... Uh, no, sorry. Until that moulded in indent is facing up... Um, with the spoiler, you want to take the back wheels, you just want to slide them out, and I'm doing my best to not get my hands in the way. Come to the spoiler section, you want to split the legs in two, as so. Ah, come on! Ah, uh, this one's a little stiff, there we go. Rotate the spoiler up. To about halfway. Whoops. Rotate the outer fin sections as so. Then fold that down. And I suppose for a third vehicle mode you could just display them like this. What's really nice though is um, is the little crossbow motif that uh, that they used for the uh, for the back section of the vehicle. And I actually think that's pretty damn cool. Anyway, carrying on. You want to take these two grey sections here, rotate them down as so. And then you just want to slide the wheels in as so, as so that the wheels are flush with the panels. You want to come to the legs and you want to accordion them down as so that they're alongside his cog piece. As so and as so. You want to come down to these two grey sections here, rotate them up, which will reveal the feet and a heel spur. Repeat the process on the other foot. Ta-da! He has feet. 
Well, I take his legs, rotate them up, and then slide his cog piece forward. So, and already you've got half of the robot done. You want to take these two sections here with the front tyres, and you just want to slide them out with the greatest of ease. Saki Saki. Anyway, on the inside of the arms there, and I'll just get my desk lamp to shine on it. There we go. But on the indent on the arms here, as you can see, there's a small grey section. You want to just get your finger in there, and voila, he has a hand. However, though, on his left arm, as you can see, he has two grey indents. The upper one is his hand, the lower one, according to the instruction sheet, is a comlink radar. Now, if, like me, you have a copy of the 1986 Transformers film, or if, alternatively, you're old enough to remember it, people will probably use that comlink radar disc as Hot Rod's buzzsaw. I know that's what I use it for whenever I display him with it. But, for the time, I'm going to display him with both of his hands out. And, yeah, that does have a tendency to happen. It's either the ball joint is extremely weak, or its joint is extremely weak. Might just um, put a little dab of super glue in there to uh, to secure it a bit more, or um, or some sellotape. Or well, actually, there are quite a lot of ways you could do it. But I digress. I am slowly beginning to get off topic again. Anyway. So after you've got the arms out of the way, and hang on, I need to raise my tripod. Because you can't see a bloody thing. Yay! Oh shit. Apologies for the languages, footballers, mothers. Well, overprotective YouTube moms, or whatever you want to be called. Sorry for the effing and jeffing. Anyway, as I was saying, after you get the arms positioned like this, you want to take the hood section of the car, and rotate that down. That'll just peg into place, and there you have Hot Rod's chest and his little cranium. Anyway, you then want to come to the back, rotate the roof canopy a full 180 degrees, as so. You want to come to the sides of the legs here, and you just want to simply flip those out. And what those will do is, is they will give you clearance, um to pose him via his knees. And for some unknown reason, the legs on mine are extremely out of balance. So much so that I have to have his legs squatted closely like that. Which, actually, makes him look like he needs to go to the bathroom. But anyway, there is uh, Reveal the Shield Hot Rod in his robot mode. Uh, him. There we go. So yeah. Now before I get onto the articulation, height comparison time. So I'll just swivel the lamp back to uh, back to here. Move my camera away from the TV in case my TV magically turns on and shows me playing Forza Horizon. In which case then I'll get another copyright strike. And I don't want that. Anyway. There's the Reveal the Shield Deluxe Class Hot Rod. And here he is next to the Transformers Prime Cyberverse um, Power Eyes. Uh, no, sorry, not the Cyberverse. Um, Transformers Prime Voyager Class, or Power Eyes Class, or whatever you want to call it. Optimus Prime. Please try to distract your sighting from the blinding light piping that op that is Optimus's chest. Mind you though, that is some brilliant light piping. Here he is, next to Transformers Superlink Treadbolt, and I bet I won't be able to get him to stand. Hey, I was right. Oh wait, ah, hey. There we go. But yeah, uh, so that's pretty cool. That's quite tall, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty damn tall. Hot Rod is up to um, Treadbolt's elbow. And last but certainly not least, 
Here he is next to the Transformers Superlink repaint of Mirage. Isn't that precious? Whatever. Anyway, back to Hot Rod. And his articulation. So his articulation is as follows. His head is on a pin joint. I can do a full 360. The arms from the shoulder downward are on a ball joint. And can sort of do a full turn. But the fin gets in the way. So that's a bit of a disappointment. The arms from the elbows down. They're also on a pin joint. And they can rotate all the way outwards. Making him look as if he's about to start sprinting. Or something. Anywho. Gotta get his arm out of the way for this. His legs. Can go. Provided this figure is willing to work with me. Go all the way forwards. As so. Not that far back. And do rotate outward at the cog pieces. So. So you can have him some sort of really silly Decepticon ass-kicking uh, pose. Whee ah Oh, the enthusiasm of a Monday YouTuber, eh? It is lacking, to be honest. <laughs> oh, God in heaven, help me. And then, of course, the lower legs are also on a pin joint, so they can bend at the knee. And they can also rotate at the knee. And yes, his left arm just fell off. Again. Big shock. And that's pretty much it for Hot Rod's articulation. And now, for his weaponry. He has a gun. With a stupidly bright blue flame. Is whether that's supposed to represent the flames that you usually see coming out of a car that has um, a couple of nitrous oxide tanks hooked up to it, I don't really know. But yeah, ah, uh, sod it. He has his gun, and he has his little comlink disc, which, again, to me... And many people who remember the 1986 Transformers film will always be his buzzsaw. So yeah, now he's ready to go kick some Decepticon ass. Like a boss. And now to get him back into his vehicle mode. So you just want to remove the gun. Fold in the buzzsaw. And for the purposes of the transformation, flip out his hand. Or at least for the purposes of this video, anyway. Plug the gun off back onto his backpack. Straighten out his arms. First thing you want to do is you want to take these two doors here. And you just want to collapse them against the leg, as so. Come to his backpack. Rotate that 180 degrees, as so. Come to his arms, rotate them all the way up, raise the roof, man, it's party time! Whatever. And rotate in his hands. You want to take the chest section, you want to get your nail in between the chest, um, underneath his chest and above his cob piece, grow up. You want to detach the chest from the rest of the body. Rotate it up. Then you just want to slide the arms in together. And there, as you can see, you already have half the car. Next thing you want to do is you want to take his cog piece, slide that back, come to his feet, rotate them inward as so. Then you want to accordion the legs up, and the doors will peg onto clip positioned here on the arm and a small nub positioned on the canopy. I don't know if you saw that. And if you didn't, my sincere apologies. Come on. There we go. Until his legs look a little something like this. 
Then you want to take these two great plates here, rotate them up until they're flush against the leg. Now I want to take his back wheels, slide them into the arches of the car. Oh, hang on. There we go. Then you want to take his backpack, rotate that up 90 degrees, rotate the fin upwards 180 degrees on either side, as so. Rotate that down, and then there are two clips on either side of the spoiler which will go into two slots on the inner section of his legs. As so. You want to take the missile, eject it from the gun and rotate it around until that little moulded in indent there, which you might be able to see better if I do this, is uh, facing the release mechanism of the gun. Alright. Good. And so, there is Hot Rod in his vehicle mode. Now, would I recommend picking up this figure if you succeeded in finding him on eBay? Well, given what he's probably going for in this day and age on eBay, definitely, definitely not. I, I wouldn't pick him up for the stupidly high prices that he's going for on eBay. However, though, if you do succeed in finding one that is within your price budget and is cheap enough, then... Yeah, by all means, go for it. And any incarnation of this mould will satisfy you. Unfortunately, this is the only incarnation of the mould that I own. Which sucks because then all the co because now all the colours are going to be mismatched on the Fans Project Protector trailer. But whatever. And one thing I forgot to show off as well is that this small grey section here in front of the engine block on the hood is a rub symbol, hence the term, or hence the name of the franchise, Reveal the Shield. You just basically, it's basically a rub symbol. You just carry on rubbing that, and the idea is that the friction and the heat from the rubbing makes the symbol change colour, which it has. And I'll just show you real quick. As you can see, it is now blue and is slowly fading to green. The camera may be a bit slow on picking that up. Come on. Please focus. Come on. Come on, camera. Nope, it isn't doing it. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is the downfalls of what you get if you purchase a camera that doesn't have autofocus. I've definitely learnt my lesson. Regardless, this has been Speedy of Terry Productions saying thank you for watching, and in the next parts of this three-pack reboot review, we shall be looking at Nightstick, the Target Master. So until then, folks, this has been Speedy of Terry Productions saying thank you for watching, and once again, a happy belated New Year. Bye-bye.